have invited Adam out to come here and talk. And I let you introduce yourself. Okay. I'm Adam. Um, I got into commercial music writing by accident. I was uh, basically just a musician. Um, I was always playing music. Uh, really not good at anything else. Um, so my first business was my band. And back in the 80s and 90s, you know, it was different. Uh, you had big ma major labels and you had independence and there was more money. Um, so I basically survived off just being a musician. I've never really had a real job. Um, and so eventually around the mid to late 90s, uh, my band got signed to a major label. And we thought, oh, this is going to be great. This is a whole side story. I could get into it with you on the, you know, person to person. But it didn't go that well because, you know, major labels like banks and uh, they see your band as a house and they want to change the color and change the shingles and change the door and change the windows. And, and why they sign you is not, you know, really why, what they're going to do with you. Like everyone has an opinion. Too many cooks. So uh, we got dropped and then I just went back to New York and walked into a, a jingle house, they called it. So it's, it's um, you, you guys know the Brill Building? You ever hear of, um, um, it was, it, it's kind of like the Detroit method where everyone gets into a house and just writes. It's similar to the um, <clears throat> Max Martin thing, but so in the 60s, or the 50s and 60s, you had the Brill Building in New York. So you had Neil Diamond, Neil Sedaka, Carol King, Jerry Goffin, uh, Paul Simon was a writer there. And they just did it as a day job so that they can so that they can play the cafes and do their own music. But um, they wrote music for other people. So I walked into a music house and there were like uh, 15 writers in rooms just writing for commercials. And I thought, you know, I'm tired of the music industry. Um, it was a tough run and I just, I need to change. And I don't want to take it so personally because when you, it's your own music, you live and die by it. It's, it's everything. So I wanted to just, since I do music, I figured why not be a plumber and just find the leak and fix it musically. And, um, and that's what scoring music to picture is kind of like because the picture is not yours. If you're doing, like when, you know, uh, if you ever do movies, I don't know if anyone here has ever done an independent film, it's not your film. So you're removed and you're there as a service to the director. And, and I kind of like that because it took my ego out. Um, by the way, this is not how to write commercials. This is really just everything else. Um, so I like the fact that I was removed, that my ego was removed and I wasn't so hurt when someone didn't like my song. And I just got to make music. And so I started writing there, and this was 18 years ago. And basically, the spot would come in. You know, I would show you something, but you watch TV. So you already see why show you. I could just turn the TV on, right? So I bet that the spot would come in. You'd sit there with your guitar, and then you'd have a conference call, and you'd hear um, what they wanted. The creatives, agencies have creatives and producers. It's similar to songwriters and managers. The manager gets them to the show, the creative does the music, but gets lost. And so in agencies, they have creatives, creatives and producers. And so they both get on the call and they say, you know, we kind of like, um, you know, Kanye West, but we also like uh, Seager Ross. Can you do both? And you're like, fuck, that's hard, you know? How would Kanye West and Seager Ross mix? Or how would, um, you know, how would Phoenix mix with Tom Jones? You know, and, and it's cool. It's like they think that what they did, they worked really hard on, whether it's a car commercial or it's um, an airline commercial. They worked really hard on it. And they don't if they can't afford to license Seager Ross or they can't afford to license Kanye West, they will come to you because you're cheaper. Um, for instance, a lot of uh, li big licensing deals are like uh, $500,000 to a million dollars. The small ones are $50,000, but you can do it for $10,000 or $20,000. So if they can't get Kanye, they're coming to you. If they can't get, you know, uh, Phoenix, they're coming to you. If they can't get the big artist. And the good thing about coming to you is 
Kanye's not going to score this car commercial. He's too busy vacationing with Beyonce. You're going to score it. And that's, uh, you're an asset because all of a sudden you're a team player, uh, just like scoring a film. Um, and I'm sure you've all seen uh, Wes Anderson films, Isle of Dogs, you know, the, all these have beautiful soundtracks. Desplat is just amazing. And so, you know, their whole career, they're just scoring, but they've made a career out of, out of being a support member for the director. So you're part of a team and you're a cheaper part, but you still make money. Here's the good thing. By the time the major labels sort of ended, the, you know, the dinosaur was like, you know, hitting the, the pavement, uh, which was like 2000, because we had Napster, which was free music. It was sharing, uh, which is still going on, really. Who gets paid from digital? You know, you get a little. You know, you need a million plays to get $1,000. Like, it's fucking bananas. So here's a way to make um, a living making music. And I thought, this is great. And it, the money was so good that I bought a house and a boat and a car. You know, I was like rolling in money. It's gotten not as good, but you can still make money while you do the music that you love. And so that, to me, is very functional. Movies are not as much, but commercials can be much more. And the reason is, is making a record is cool. Like, you know, you give it to your friends. They're like, I love your band. Um, you know, uh, you get press, you know, you play shows. Uh, making music for a, 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 a commercial with a kid in a diaper is not cool. So they're paying you for the lack of coolness, <laughs> right? Like, this is a job, and you're a musician. So, so, um, so, uh, so I, jo I joined this music house that was 20 years ago, 18 years ago, did very well. The problem is I had to stop making my music for a while just to focus. So that can be a problem, the balance. you got to strike a balance. Six years ago, I started my own company. And, and things have shifted. So when I got in there, there were 15 writers. There was like a chef on staff. This is Midtown New York. It was amazing. Um, now uh, the economy has changed, so the facility is smaller. And now everyone has Pro Tools or... Uh, Logic or your every computer comes with uh, GarageBand so everybody can make music right your uncle your aunt your cousin so but you know it's cool because now the software is cheaper and if you have talent you can actually do it in at your house so our you know in Midtown Manhattan it's very expensive so it's like Stockholm you know right in the center so now the facility is smaller and we hire outside people which is very cool because I can come here and if, come on in, it's all good, it's all good. So now I can go travel Sweden and meet, meet writers that uh, I could hire, which is very cool. Um, and um, like we hired, we hired, we have some in-house people and one guy's out of Berkeley, which is in Boston, which is a great music school. And he submitted demos, and they were just great. You know, you just knew. You listened, and you're like, that's going to be a commercial. And we brought him in, and he's 22. So age doesn't matter. You know, uh, where you live doesn't matter anymore. You know, 20 years ago, you had to move to New York to work with me. But now, uh, you don't need to. You could work anywhere. The whole world is connected. So um, you just, there are, so, so there are te there's things you need to know about doing this. Since your service industry you're like a plumber you have, think of a plumber you have to be patient you walk in there's there's a grandmother who's screaming there's water spurting yeah you, you you can't have any ego you have to just fix it and and you have to have a smile and if it breaks an hour later and you get the call you go back and you keep doing it until it's fixed it's service industry whereas being a rock star everyone services you right you're the one who shows up late you miss a show you miss a press thing um, you know, you're, you're, the, you're cool if you don't care. This is your cooler if you care. So your temperament, your behavior, how, how you behave on the phone call with all these screaming creatives and producers is very important. That you're level-headed and calm. And that when they say, what do you think, you just very concisely say, I think you need this, this, and this, and can you do it in three hours? And you're like, yes, you gotta turn it around. So it's just like you're in your, you're in your van and, and you're like, the, she calls back and says it's still leaking, you turn your van around, you go back. 
And then if they like your work in America, they put a little thing on, on the front lawn going, plumbing done by, you know, you know, like Adam. And, or, or, you know, the siding, done, the windows done by, you know, and they promote you. And, and then the word of mouth happens. Nobody wants to work with you. Word of mouth is everything. The industry is very small. So if you keep turning it around in three hours and doing a great job, just like any business, the word of mouth is golden. And that's how I have all my clients, because we don't fuck anything up. Um, we just try to hit home runs. Um, why do we try to hit home runs? Because it's music. This isn't something we don't like. You know, it's not like I took a career that I hate. And every morning I'm like, I don't want to go to work. I do want to go to work. So I take that love and I just turn it into service industry. Um, and I, it, it's, I, I, try to, I try to shower off all the rock star shit that I thought I was going to do when I was younger. You know, just shower it off and just do the job. And, um, and yeah, it is the inverse of being a rock star, but it is music and I'm a musician and that's all I need to do. Uh, so I started my business and um, it was a little tough, but we, we got clients and um, we're music, we, we always promote ourselves as musician friendly, musician owned. We, we promote ourselves as the real thing. We use real instruments. We, um, you know, if, if they want a trumpet, we get a real trumpet. If they want flute, we get real flute. Uh, we, we try not to cut corners. We treat the commercials like record tracks. They always, their minds are always blown because they're like, why would you do that? I'm like, well, don't you, don't, why would I give you something I, I don't want you to own in your Spotify? Like, I want you to be able to play this on Spotify, even though it's 30 seconds. It should be the quality of a record. It should be as good or better than the license they couldn't afford. You guys getting this? So, so this is just a mentality. Um, there's nothing. There's nothing about it to me that is half-fast or cheap or just because it's it's a stupid commercial. Sometimes they're really stupid. It's I want the music to be better so that it's better. Um, so uh, I met this guy in Cannes, and what I noticed is the work there is fucking great, and it's commercials. And do you agree? Yeah. Yeah, it's like the best. And, and they're mind-blowing. Like, ep you guys ever see Epic Split? It was done out of um, Stockholm with um, Claude Van Damme. Mm. And it's the, uh, you know, it was like yeah. four years ago where mm. the trucks are going and, you know. And the music was amazing. Every time something wins in can, the music's amazing. We don't get the respect, but take away the music and it won't win. Right? Yeah. So, but no one talks about it. And... I have, I've had uh, conversations with CEOs of companies going, how do we get better music? They're just so disconnected. And I'm like, hire people like me, you know? <laughs> I'm confident because we're good, not because of my ego. You know, it, it's, it's not bullshit confidence. It's, I just know that's all I know how to do is music. So um, after a while, you're just like, fuck it. You just gotta say it, you know? Like, if you want good stuff, just call me, you know? And I also say my competitors are good. They're just as good as me. The only difference is we just had a beer and you might like me more. But all my, all my competitors in New York are fucking great. They're top of their game. And we're beyond the humble, you know, we're beyond the, oh, you know. It, it, we all agree we're great and we're just going to sort of accept that and just try to, like, there's plenty of work. So um, I want to talk, like, have more of a conversation than just speak, because I hate these things when I gotta sit with you know someone talk, yeah, jabbing. But um, you know, it's really that simple. It don't ever think commercial music just because you can't hear it as much is uh, less than what's on your uh, favorite tracks in a library. Um, it should be as good or better than you know. It should be great. Um, so uh, does anybody have any, like a question I can just groove off? Yes. I have a question yeah. uh, regarding y your commercial composing. Um, uh, how is it with uh, uh, feature films? Do you do that as well, or, or I, I know that uh, le uh, less amounts of money in that, but yeah. have you it's done hard, that? you know. Like you know, you, you see like Isle of Dogs, and it's like beautiful, or or um, or you know, um, I'm friends with John Bryan. All his, uh, we do, you know, it's mm -hmm. like I love. I, I see these movies, and I'm like so moved. But the money's less. It could take a whole year. Yeah. Um, 
I think the first thing is the money. You know, we have a staff, so we have to pay them. Of course. If it was just me and my partner, we might do more movies. We, we do some things. You, you guys ever see Ozark? It's a show on Netflix. We did the trailer. And so that was fun, and it was like short, three days. We got one of the actors. He came in and sang really low. He was the uncle who got electrocuted. Um, but um, it was David Bowie's Man Has Sold the World. We got to, we got to do a, I, I think, ownable version that was uh, haunting and like Nine Inch Nails, you know. And, um, but, be, but if we had to do the whole series, like we, we did a, a couple of Netflix series and it just, it took over the writers. And they were just, they couldn't leave their computer. They were just like, they, it was like, became a marriage. And, and jing jingles are uh, speed dating. It's like Tinder and you just boom, boom, boom. And the money's good, you know, and you're like, this is fucking great. So, so you know, I, I want to do more and I want to be known for that. But Midtown Manhattan, it's very expensive. So we're compromised. Yeah. So uh, I'm a designer myself. And I'm just starting to think about sort of the relationship with the client. And I can imagine it can be, you know, satisfying if I compare it to what I do. You you have someone who have a vision for a product in my line of work, and you try to sort of figure out, you know, what's the, you know, what's the expression they want, you know, what's the feeling they want, what's the idea they want to express, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I can just imagine, you know, if you, I'm I'm really curious of what does the briefs look like, you know, if you have. If you have a like a horror kind of you know picture, then of course you need to add these elements that enhances that, and then yeah. you have something else, another kind of point, like whatever it is. I mean, I get that yeah. I, I can understand the diversity of uh, different kind of commercials can be so wide, yeah. and it can be anything. But how does that? Because it, it needs to be some kind of. I, I can guess it can be a bit very different. Someone comes to you and, and you know it's a very abstract brief, or they don't even it's know what they want. It's always abstract, yeah. But also, it must be very interesting that that part of trying to figure out what's the actual idea I'm trying to sort of enhance here with the music. It's I mean, just looking at if you would if you would uh, you know watch a horror movie when, with the wrong kind of music. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's about not that scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, but yeah. really, you know, going but that's very obvious. But uh, going into more sort of subtle. Yeah. You know, components in that, that yeah. to me that seems like super interesting you know, that yeah at some point trailers changed yeah. trailers were boring when I was a kid mm -hmm. and at some point it became do, 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 you know like yeah. big drums taiko drums yeah. and, and they're all the same now like every tra and, and at some point one person was like how about we try big drums yeah. and that was like a light bulb went off <laughs> and he doesn't get money for it but he changed Hollywood you know yeah. we we um there's a, there's a there's a talent to to sitting on a phone call with people who are confused mm. that want the best yeah. and, and 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 they ask you and and they want your um your 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 gut response yeah and if you can somehow you know cuz they're arguing one guy likes jazz one guy likes speed metal one guy likes you know if you could find the sweet spot somewhere between all these guys yeah. and make something new then you're doing more than your job some people so, go make so it yellow. <laughs> you know? so I guess it's a, bit, a little bit like uh, cooking as well, where you you know you have someone calling you and ask you to do a new dish, yeah. and if they don't even know exactly what the you know what this should taste like, yeah. it's a bit of a challenge. But you need to start of, you know throw in different spices and herbs and stuff and sort of get it to taste right. If you're a chef yeah. and you have a party of important people mm -hmm. and they don't tell you what they want, but they tell you the feeling they want to get. <laughs> You're bewildered, and you're excited. You're yeah. challenged, mm -hmm. which is, and that's the reason you became a chef. Yeah. And you start going out to the garden, and you're like, I'm gonna think chocolate and fish. Yeah. Like <laughs> you're gonna fuck around a little, and you're gonna invent a new dish. And that yeah. those are the opportunities you 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 want, because, you know, this is what you were born to do: get challenged, mm -hmm. and somehow decipher, yeah. decipher what. Is needed mm -hmm. and then create something new and that's how hip-hop started in New York you know that's how um, most forms of art you know mm. like Pollock just 
yeah. was th and he went holy you know maybe he was on the phone and he just flipped the brush behind him and looked over I mean yeah. it happens out of the weirdest scenarios and so when we get a call and they're like make it yellow mm -hmm. and I'm sitting there with my guitar <laughs> um, we have to figure out what they want what, what's the weirdest brief you've gotten probably make it yellow <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like there are clients that don't like snare drums yeah. that don't like bass that mm -hmm. don't like you know and, you know it's a big industry and there's a lot of commercials mm -hmm. so there's a lot of teams of creatives yeah. and I would say 90% of them aren't that good 10% are great yeah. and so I'm dealing with the 90% and they just have no clue so I'm there to sort of, you know, it's the same, you're building a house and you get a good contractor yeah. and you want to, you want a path and they they give you options. Mm -hmm. You can have this stone, you can have brick, mm -hmm. you can have, you know, and the bad contractor just goes with what's cheapest at the store that day, you know. Mm -hmm. So the good contractor looks at it, you know, and, and like creates something new and they're excited mm -hmm. and they make a design and they spell your name in the design with the mm -hmm. bricks, you know, mm -hmm. and, and you're like, and they put kids hand, your kids handprints as the so, you know as the borders and all of a sudden it's yours mm. and that's all we are we're just there to to make something that's ownable something that's different you know um i i think a, a chef would love that and the best chefs are have they don't have a menu they just go with the flow they improvise um but do you find it uh, easier if you meet the client in person or just i love have it a, but have like a phone call or Generally, they're afraid of music. Yeah. They're, they're, uh, it's so far, like it's a very foreign, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but you have these art directors that are just visual, you know, mm -hmm. and, or you have producers that, you know, they just, music is, is, uh, this other place. It's, it's like, um, they just go to shows and see them on stage. There's a disconnect. And so when they come in, I've had them freak out. Like they're just, they clam up, you know. And my job is to relax them. I'm like, it's okay, you know. Yeah. It's just a guitar. I'm just gonna strum it, you know. But um, I've had everything. I've had fist fights. I've had um, arguments. I've had divorces in the studio. You know, it's like it's, it's fucking bananas, you know. But for me, if the end result's good, you know. I have another question. I mean, now you're working with commercials, um, but. For example, I have a friend who works in a Swedish startup, or it's not really a startup anymore, uh, Soundtrack Your Brand, mm -hmm. which is all about, it's part of Spotify, or Spotify's a big investor. Um, but that's all about sort of creating an atmosphere with music for branded spaces. Mm -hmm. Could be a hotel, could be, you know, could be anything really, you know, and it's basically the same thing that you're soundtracking this experience and uh, put a lot of money into this experience. If it's retail, or if it's a nice hotel, yeah. or if it's, you know, whatever it is, uh, so it's not a movie director at Daniel, but maybe it's an architect, yeah. and they want you know something custom to yes. to just uh, lift that experience, you know. And they're focusing on making a smart system of them, you know, picking out playlists or stuff like that. But uh, I can clearly see you know if you would go one step further, yeah. and it's actually custom made design of the music yeah. to perfectly fit the vision of the totally. architect. To me, that seems like an obvious sort of next step. I think it's, been, it's happening. Every cafe in New York has a soundtrack. Every franchise, Panera Bread. I mean, there's so many, there's so many ways to make fucking money. We should just name this the other ways to make money in music of this class. Right. I mean, you know, you have gaming. Yeah. <clears throat> you, have, you have playlists for restaurants, playlists from, you know, uh, waiting rooms for doctors. Mm. You ever sit in the doctor's office and there's a video? There's music for the video? Mm -hmm. How to help help your kid with a headache? You know, yeah. Yeah. we've done it all. The apps. Yeah. We did music for an yeah. app where a kid's going into surgery, yeah. and he's holding up his phone, and there's music, and his his be his uh, cartoons are going. It's going to be okay. It's just an MRI. It's just stitches. Yeah. Don't worry. And we've soundtracked that. Yeah. There's so many ways. I have personally a problem with some of this because sometimes you don't want to have too much yeah. selling. You know, like I don't really like Starbucks. Yeah. I, I personally like I like to make my own soundtrack. Soundtrack, um, but but if it, you know, there are so many other ways to make money, and I'm also the business guy, so I'm out looking for these ways. You know, amusement parks. 
you're in an amusement park waiting, waiting in a line, right? Mm-hmm. And you hear, in the bushes, in the fucking bushes, there are speakers. In the toilet, there's music. Waiting for a hot dog, there's, there's different soundtracks for different environments. Uh, there's one company called Yessie, and they, they work in Germany. So they do all the music for the ride. So you're on this ride, and it's like dinosaurs coming at you. And, and, they, and they not only make the music, but they upgrade the music every time they change something. So anywhere there's music, you know, most of my life I didn't listen. But then when I got into this business, now I listen to everything. And um, every, Jesus Christ, the cars have, dum, dum, you know, yeah. backing up is a C sharp. <laughs> dum, dum, dum. Uh, you know, no seatbelt. Yeah. Um, you know, like um, if somebody gets too close to the car. Yeah. I mean, somebody's making this music, yeah. you know, and, and, and if, if they have a copyright, God love them. They're millionaires. <laughs> we do mnemonics, you know, so uh, every time, you know, you have a commercial. And then the commercial goes to the very last three seconds and it's, dun, 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 you know, we do mnemonics all the time. We charge more money for mnemonics than the actual song. The reason is it can play for 50 years. Yeah. When a corporation goes out of business, and um, let's say it goes out of business, it's been around since 1920, right? But nobody's buying that coffee anymore. It's just not good. But it has this name and this three note jingle. <laughs> then they go out of business, and then, so they go to business in 1980. 2018, some hedge fund buys it. What do they want? They don't want the fucking coffee. Mm. It tastes like 1980. They want the three notes, mm. and they want the logo with the sun coming through and a little kid. That's all they want. They want the logo and the three notes. So we charge more for the three notes because we know it's called brand equity. Mm. And, <clears throat> and what they're going to do is make cooler coffee now that's green, that's socialist, that's, you know, every, every farmer gets five pennies back for each bag, you know, and it tastes way better. But the only thing, and, and they're going to put 1920 on it, since 1920. Mm-hmm. And they're going to have the three notes in the jingle, yeah. and they're going to have that logo. Bam! You know. Yeah. And maybe the per- if it's a person, they'll look cooler. It won't look like a guy with a fedora. I mean, that we got to think ahead, you know. Yeah. So, so we'll work like six months on three notes. And, and we'll focus group the shit out of it. <laughs> what does that mean? Every mom in Iowa has to go, yeah. It's like, those three notes are important. You know, like we have AT&T, Verizon, they all have these uh, mnemonics, they're called. Um, There's so many different ways to make money, you know, and uh, so I'm the guy who goes out and finds the ways. And then I I come back and I go, oh, man, there's this whole new business opportunity. Uh, We oh, the other thing is we go internal now. We go direct. So instead, you know, you used to have agencies. I mean, you still have agencies, but the agencies... Uh, have to make money. So every time you they make they call you, I'm calling from you know McCann Stockholm. They charge you a thousand dollars, or whatever. They charge you five hundred dollars, and you see that later. So that's their markup. I don't know what the exact price is, but it's a lot. And I'm like, don't call me. <laughs> so now there are smaller agencies. The all stars from these big agencies go. They the three rock stars just leave, and they go. We're going to take a client, and we're not going to charge you $500 a phone call. But then they go big, you know. So now the clients, let's say it's, um, you know, um, what's a local, like uh, Mini Cooper, right? So Mini Cooper says, we're going to make an internal agency. So now all the clients have their own agencies. So I'm out there going to the actual clients, board of directors going, do you need music? <laughs> it's insane. There used to be five agencies when I started. Now there's like hundreds of, there's like thousands of agencies and the clients have their own agencies to compete against the agency to get the price down on everything. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, let's do it for a dollar less. You know, oh, you want to charge us this? We'll do it. Oh, we fucked it up. Okay, you can have it back. You know, and they keep doing this seesaw back and forth. You know, but they have, everyone has to have their own internal agency. So now I'm going out and getting that business direct. And then I, t- and so, each client has its own vo- style of music, and I've got to tell all my writers about how what that music is. Some like classical. Let's veer back to writing now. So let's say you're a classical writer. That's good. Let's say you're just rock. That's good, too. Let's say you could do it all. 
even better. It's hard to do it all. It's hard to be an underscorer where it sounds like John Williams and rock out. There's a reason John Williams doesn't rock out. You know, Star, Star Wars and E.T. and all that. And there's a reason why rockers aren't John Williams. There's a divide in the brain to me of where you want to go musically when you see picture. And for me, I pick up a guitar, I'm a songwriter. And a song to me is, is short. A pop song is short. Uh, you know, the best pop songs say it fast. Two minutes, two, two and a half minutes. That's why I like a 30 second spot. Get it done quick. Um, so I'm a songwriter and I thought I can't underscore, but it worked because every spot has your front problem solution. And then they'll just tag on the corporation. So it could be a heartfelt spot where it's like a kid loses, uh, kids on vacation loses, uh, the teddy bear. And then the kids in the car crying his eyes out. And then somebody at the hotel finds a teddy bear. And that person at the hotel calls um, FedEx or whatever the shipping company is. Shipping guy comes up. He's all, give me that teddy bear. <laughs> Takes the teddy bear personally. Puts it in a package. That package ends up at the kid's house. They get home from their vacation, opens the thing. The kid's crying his eyes out, sees the teddy bear. Boom, there's my teddy bear. Shipping company. <laughs> and at the end, you're not crying, but you remember it. And you're like, oh, Fucking good story. Yeah. Good guys. And um, I'm a songwriter, so to me, a pop song is that. You start with uh, a problem, or you, you got you. Your problem's the verse. You know, you know the world's fucked up. You know my car won't start. You know I can't catch that one mouse. Um, and then the chorus comes. You know, ebony and ivory. You know, and then all of a sudden we're happy. We're all, you know, loving each other. And at the end, you say the band name. So it's, that's all I've been doing. You know, it's, it's a short, anybody can do this to me if you understand the fundamentals of music. And this is the writing stuff, not the business stuff. Um, going back to where you started, where you started out as a musician, and that's the thing you were doing full time. Yeah. Um, so going to like these guys yeah. who are in the 20s, and uh, the, all they want to do, I guess, is play music and, you know, just do that, you know, full time. But uh, today, you know, um, I guess if you want to do that, you need to finance that in one way or another. So either you do that by, you know, just uh, trying to get well paid for gigs and, you know, the traditional stuff. Or you try to get signed with a record label, which isn't that easy. And if you do it, you might end up, you know, with no control, you know, for you know, yeah. what you're going to do. So, to me, it seems really, really interesting, you know, how could you combine this opportunity if you have this talent that you're yeah. working with anyway, and you're probably sort of very, very well qualified, at least if you understand the plumber sort of method. Yeah, of course, thing. of course. Um, but it seems to me like that's a very, you know, a fantastic opportunity yeah. to self-fund it sort of efficiently if you can sort of track how it works. And, you know, especially, as you said, that you can actually do it. Yeah. You don't have to sit in a certain office, etc. You don't. You, you can, can do it anywhere. all around the world. You can do it on a laptop on a plane. You can do whatever yeah. if you have a system of actually getting these kind of jobs and you understand how they work and efficiently get, you know, you know on an hourly basis yeah. funding to um, what, you, what you really want to invest in. You know, if you can find, but, you know, what do you think about that sort of? It's okay. also a mental thing where you have to ship from, That's a big ship from the plumber <coughs> to the rock star it's a big you know, question. the same day, maybe. It's, a, it's your lifestyle. Yeah. Is there anybody from a label in here? Anybody? Kind of? You okay, you're from a cool label. <laughs> Labels have become a thing of the past. Um, now it's, you just, you're, you're, I'm going to be careful with my words. <laughs> <laughs> Watch you. The classic label kind of owned you. And they could break you fast into the marketplace. So when we got signed to a major, our CDs went everywhere. They went to Indonesia. We got dropped, but they, they, based, they made 10, 20,000 CDs just like that. But they also owned our record and they owned us. And now it's the opposite. Now you own your own image. So you have, you know, you can go on CD Baby, you can have a release date, the whole world gets it. Um, you can make your own publishing deal and put it in movies. Uh, I, the, you know, it, if you're lazy, 
the old school is good and you need a label. If you're just creative and you don't want to deal with businesses and deals and, you know, contracts, touring, booking shows, I mean, it's a lot of work. That's good. But if you're functional and you want to try to do as much as possible, now you have all the means to do it. So it really depends on your personality. Uh, my lowest points of my life were when I was on a label because I felt like I was out of control. And I mean the classic major, no. not, not you guys. <laughs> We've been on indie labels where it's pure love, you know. Uh, labels start, were started by record store clerks. Seymour Stein at Cy Records, who's signed Madonna and Talking Heads. He just loved music. I kn knew the guy. Um, Eric, uh, uh, Jack Holtzman, who started Electra, who found The Doors, was just a guy who loved music. Chris Blackwell started Island Records, who found U2 and Bob Marley. He was just a, he was a kid in Jamaica who was just found, loved music, and they just wanted to get the music out. But then, the, but then they started having classes in colleges about music business. And that's when accountants took over and saw the money and not the love. And that's when it became sour. So my answer to, like if you're 22, and, and you, you, you just have to be functional. The more you do, the better off. The more seeds you plant, the better off. Meaning, do a commercial one day. Co-write with another writer for a publisher. Like, um, you meet the writer who's signed to Warner Chapel or, or, or Sony Publishing. And you have a, a writing session and you write five killer songs. You don't have to knock and call. Write killer songs. Those songs go to the publisher. They're like, who the fuck is the other writer? It always has to be about quality, not about push. If you're pushing lame shit, you're just that guy. But, but, but so keep moving. And then you'll get a, a deal with a, with a publisher. Or at least have songs with them that get planted in TV shows. And then while that's happening, you're making records. And you're, you're, you're releasing your material. And then you're also playing in other bands. You know? It, it, um, I, I, I had a conversation with Abbott from Soundtrack. We toured with them. And he's like, I had 20 bands because the country supported us. So instead of, why would I have one? I had 20. I multiplied my, my Swedish support. And that got him to Soundtrack from Union Carbide, and he had all these fucking great bands. Mm. It was structured to have a lot of output. It's brilliant. So, but you keep doing stuff. Your, your name is everywhere, and you have a list of songs, and you will find in there songs that are sellable for commercials, for, for other artists. Don't just do, ju don't just be one artist in the world just writing 12 songs every three years and hoping you know, you need more seeds out in the world. Like, when I got into jingles, I wrote three tracks a day. So by the end of the week, I had a whole ton of tracks. By the end of the year, I had a library. Now they have libraries, right? So now they want cheap music. So, so they'll, they'll be like, you got something for a thousand bucks? So they go to a library, and they go reggae, 125 BPM, and mm -hmm. 60 tracks come up. And if one of them's yours, you just made some money. This is not what I do. Mine's custom. <coughs> so if I get called, I write, and I submit. But I'll submit 12 tracks. But you could keep submitting to libraries. And it's, it's, it's kind of like money out of nowhere. Mm. They don't own it. And all of a sudden, you get a, you get a check for you know, 500 bucks. It's like photographer's work. It's, exactly. I knew a photographer. He was rolling in money because he took a picture of, uh, I forget her name, she was a model who committed suicide. She was really big, blonde, you know, she was married to a, mil a millionaire. Mm. Oh, yeah. he, he took a picture of her on a beach, and when she died, mm -hmm. guess what? Everybody wanted that picture. Mm -hmm. And guess who had the original? He did. Getty Images makes tons. So, but, but he, to get to that one picture, he had to take billions of pictures, constantly. Just going back to that, you know, what could be maybe proceed as a conflict if you're like you know a creative independent artist and you have this traditional thing between being commercial or being very sort of authentic artist it's the same in design or or art or I guess music as well I think that's a bit of a bullshit it's itself. bullshit it's bullshit uh, but just sort of turning that around is that that if you're a great musician you're great you know creative in music yeah you know going into using that and you know, f seeing the fun in the challenge of 
serving and you know uh, helping as you say and yeah. director etc and taking that challenge yeah. if you just sort of look in, in that way yeah that should really sort of raise your you know the value of you you know of course if, if you if you continue if you manage to balance being an artist doing your own thing and just you know as you were saying you yeah. know I'm, I'm really really good you know you can Fuck use yeah. me Fuck yeah. Uh, I can serve you fantastically. Fuck yeah. But if you don't have that sort of conflict that... No one wants to be Axl Rose. Yeah. I, I had the same A&R guy. My band and J Guns N' Roses. And all that guy wanted to do was get him in, back in the studio. And it, it never happened until recently. Yeah. This was 98. <laughs> 20 years later. Yeah. Axl just, st you know, stayed what in the happened? hills. He ran out of money. He just or? stayed in the hills. And when he ran out of money, let's go on yeah. tour. You want to be Paul Simon. Yeah. You know, when he was functional. You want to be like, um, you want. I'd rather be the writer for a big artist. I'd rather be the writer, like the 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 backup writer for Taylor Swift. I don't care. I don't love Taylor Swift's music, but I'll write for her. I'd rather be one of the guys writing. I don't want to be on stage shaking my ass, you know. But I want to be a functional musician. I see no harm in um, writing three tracks a day every day for something. There's no harm in that. It keep, you, you know, this is a tool. You have to keep it lubed up and going. If you don't, it stops. You forget. And so if you're doing game music one day, you know, gaming music, like, do, 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 you know, uh, for, um, for uh, Minecraft or, or uh, whatever, and then you're writing a song with a country singer the next day, something out of your element, you know, don't, don't, you know. Bon Jovi wrote a country song and had a hit, like, and then the next day you're doing speed death metal for the ghost guys, you know, and you sign an NDA, I will not tell who this person is, but you're writing with them, fucking great. Okay, so how, you know, now you have done this for how long? I mean, the commercial part? 20 years. 20 years. Oh. And now you're in Sweden and actually playing with your band, and yeah. you, it's a couple of completely new songs. Yeah. So... Do you feel that you know that whole experience is actually helping you when you want to do your own stuff? When you find the time to do your own stuff and create your own stuff, you know? well, I have my own studio. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I mean, more like creatively, you know, in the creative part. Or I'm scared by doing my own music because yeah. it's not sellable. You know, my music's very weird and quirky and edgy and dark. And so no, okay. So, but for your own, but it feels it's very satisfi satisfying. It's not sort of that the whole commercial part has in any way sort of lowered that quality. Or no, no, no. You know, you being in touch with what you want to do. Maybe that's even. No, more it's a good what question. Actually, what what it is good about it is when you do a jingle, you might have three hours, and it has to be the same quality as what's on your what's on your Spotify. You know, like it has to sound like Sigur Ross. It has to sound like. Um, Whatever, you know. They don't want something less, and you have three hours, right? So when I was in the 90s, when we used to make records, I would spend three days on a snare drum. You just bop, <laughs> bop. Okay, let's have lunch. Come back. Bop. You know, let's go, let's go home. Now it's like I get that shit done fast mm. because of the speed of commercials, mm. the speed of soundtracks. It's only helped me function better uh, uh, for the stuff that I love to do. With less anxiety. And less anxiety. <laughs> and I've also, the biggest thing is I could take my ego literally out and put it in a jar and put it over there and just function without ego. And what does that mean? It means just get it done, do the best thing you can do, and don't just detach. Detach. Let go. If it's going to be good, it's going to be good. If it's going to suck, it's going to suck. You can't control. And it's very Buddhist, but that's something I learned from commercials, you know, or, or th things other than your own music, you know. Mm. Um, but could you bring that sort of speed into when you now are writing the new songs? Totally. Yeah. I just wrote a record in, in, in a month. Really? Or like three weeks, and then record it in, in three weeks. I mean, really fast. You know, and the guys are like, whoa, slow down, you know. We want to savor the moment. I'm like, no, 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 no savoring. Um, it, it, it's, uh, you got, you know, we're, human beings were chased for millions of years by larger pr predators. We always have to be running. If you're not running, you're dead. So, you, so as a musician, 
you should always be on the move. Um, in any form function of creativity, you should always be fucking running. Not 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 uptight, but just always always creating. If you're not creating, you're retired, and that's your choice. Uh, but um, if you if if you you know you should always be writing, if that's your thing, and um, it's a tool. If you don't use it, it gets dull. You know. Does everybody hear music, or you have okay? Um, just a question regarding what, what you said before. Um, I don't know if you guys know about diegetic and non-diegetic sounds, but um, usually when you said about the car, beep, 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 oh, I know. I, I mean, know. that's a diegetic sound that you really hear. And when you look at a movie, the music is a non-diegetic sound because if it's a love story, two people get in love, suddenly, boo, 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 boo. Mm -hmm. um, so... And through that, I mean, we people get into the non-diegetic sound in our real environment uh, when we go to the men's room or whatever. Yeah. So how is that? Uh, I, I mean, is that also a dimension of uh, when you're producing commercials to yeah. adapt the non-diegetic sounds with the diegetic sounds? For yeah, example? that's a balance we're always trying to strike. Yeah. So we... Hey, come reminding of the time. Oh, I, yeah. I, whatever. That's fine. Okay. Um, we're, we, we do a lot of pharma. America's filled with drugs. Pharma. You know. Yeah. Take, eat a pizza. You feel bad? Take this to, you know, it's like everything. And so pharma music is, needs to stay out of the way and just give you this glow. Like it's okay to take this drug. <laughs> you know? Just pop the pill. And so each commercial's different. Some products need the non -de 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 -de, you know and then some products like we do um, highway safety mm -hmm. and that's like don't text when you drive uh -huh. look up and don't get hit by a car so that those that music needs to be in your face so uh, if, if uh, you know as a musician if a door squeaks boo, I'll, I'll I'll hear it and go that's a good two notes you know <laughs> um, the keyboard swing bands the same way like you know, if somebody, you know, you'll hear leather and you move, it's like, whoop, you know, it's like everything has a sound. And so is it going to alert you or is it going to support a message? Is it going to push back or is it going to, you know, what's it going to do? And I think that, you know, when you listen to Nine Inch Nails, they're, they're, he's punching you in the face. When you listen to the Sex Pistols, she's, they're telling you fucking the monarchy's dead and it's about anarchy. Whereas, you know, a good soundtrack... Most of the time when you see a movie, you don't notice the soundtrack unless it sucks. You go, this right, music right. fucking sucks. It's ruining it. But if it's good, you just watch the movie. Right. Mm. So if it stays out of the way and just makes you cry in the love scene and makes you up, up tight, you know, that's a good soundtrack. It doesn't need to go, hey, look at me. So you need to understand both. You need to understand uh, being alert in music and getting a point across musically or staying out of the way and just um, helping a grandma across the street musically. Just support, you know? And, and if you have an understanding of both, you'll do great.